6.6, finding rational zeros. Okay, 6.6, .6, finding rational zeros. Um, a rational zero theorem basically is saying you take the constant term in your polynomial and you divide it by the leading coefficient. All right, and we're trying to find all the different factors that there are for each of those. You list all possible factors. This can get tedious and time consuming. The main reason you're doing this is because you don't know what divides into the polynomial, so you're trying to figure out what the answer is. In the last section, in 6.5, we gave it to you. It's like we gave you one of the answers. Now, I'm not giving you one of the answers, and you have to figure it out on your own. So once you figure out what one of the answers might be, then you can use synthetic division in order to find an answer to a problem. But before that point, you can't. So that's what the rational zero theorem is. It's us trying to find answers. So we're going to find the rational zeros and factor this. So here's your example. I give you x cubed plus 2x squared minus 11x minus 12, but I don't give you anything that goes into it. I don't tell you that one of them is x minus 3 or uh, x plus 7 or I don't, I don't say f of you know negative 3. I didn't tell you any answers. We need to figure that out. So according to the theor theorem, you take the constant term, which is a 12, a negative 12, you take the leading coefficient, which is a 1, and you make it positive or negative. We're kind of not even worrying about what the actual sign is because we're going to look at both anyway. I'm looking at both positive and negative 12, and I'm looking at both positive and negative 1. So the point is I need to look at every single factor of 12. So all the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Those are all the factors of 12. Then I divide every single one of those by all the factors of 1. Well, in this case, there's only one factor of 1, right? 1. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. But once again, I'm not looking at just each term. I'm looking at the positive and negative of every single term. So really, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 different numbers to look at, to check. And there really is no great way to do this. You just have to guess which one you think will work for these problems. To be honest with you, this is a great thing to do with a partner. You need to sit down with a group of people and each of you take turns till you find one. As soon as you find one, then you're good to go. So, now when I go to do this, I have synthetic division. I need to do synthetic division with one of these, what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 different options. So I'm doing synthetic division, and the first one I'm going to pick, I'll pick a positive 1, because 1 divided by 1 is 1. So pick a positive 1, so let's see if it works. I pull, pull down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1, I add them together to get 3. 3 times 1 is 3, I add them together to get negative 8. Negative 8 times 1 is negative 8, I add them together to get negative 20. How do I know if this works or not? Well, very simply put, I know that this doesn't work because it gives me a remainder. I do not want a remainder. The remainder here is negative 20. When you're solving the problems, when you're doing the problems, here's basically how you know it didn't work. Positive 1 doesn't work because I get a remainder, and you don't want them. But negative 1 could still work, so don't discount the whole 1s. You're only discounting the positive one. So let's try out plugging in negative one and see what happens. I bring down a one. One times negative one is negative one. I am to get get one. One times negative one is negative one. I am to get get negative twelve. Negative twelve times negative one is positive twelve. I am to get get zero. Because that's zero, that means there is no remainder, which means that I found one that works. Negative one works. When I plug it in, when I plug a negative one in, I get that as my answer. So that's a good start. This works. So I have x equals negative 1 as a solution. So to solve that, to figure out what the factors are, I add it to both sides. And there's the first factor, x plus 1. That's good. We're golden. When I went and did synthetic uh, division, I got those as my answers. And remember, we were starting at x cubed. So this is x squared. That's x. And that's negative 12. Because if you look back in the last page, we start at x cubed, so the answer, remember, goes 1 down. So it was x cubed, which means it starts at x squared. I need to now see, can I factor this? Is there two numbers that multiply to give me negative 12 that add to give me 1? Well, there is. 
right? When I'm doing this, two numbers that give me negative 12 that add to give me 1, positive 4 and negative 3. So this factors into x plus 4 and x minus 3. And I cannot forget about this right here. That is x plus 1. So there are my factors. There's my answer, just like the last section, in 6.5. The exact same way we got the answers in 6.5, except I didn't know what to plug in. I had to find that out first in order to make this work. So x plus 1 we found. This is x plus 4 and x minus 3. So example 2. This is a nice, big, a huge, long one. So when I'm doing this, I know that I have a 12. So according to our theorem, I take the constant over the leading coefficient. Well, that's a positive or negative 12 divided by a positive or negative 10. So I need to list all my factors. All my factors are 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. The last one, we had a 1 on the bottom. No biggie. Now I have a 10 on the bottom. All the factors of 10, 1, 2, 5, and 10. You know what that means? I have a ridiculous amount of these to choose. I have to choose 1 over, or sorry, every single one of these over 1. So 1 divided by 1, 2 divided by 1, 3 divided by 1, 4 divided by 1, 6 divided by 1, 12 divided by 1, and make them all plus or minus. Then guess what i got to do? Then I do 2 divided by 1. Or sorry, got it backwards. Then I do 1 divided by 2, 1 divided by 5, and 1 divided by 10, and so on. And I keep going the whole way through this list. I have the top everywhere, right? Here's my top, right? There's the top. And I divide them all. I first divided every single one of those by 1. Now I have to divide every single one of those by 2. So it's 1 divided by 2, 2 divided by 2, 3 divided by 2, 4 divided by 2, 6 divided by 2, 12 divided by 2. Then I move on to 3. Okay. Uh, oh, but before I move on to the 3, I have to double check. If there's any doubles, I don't have to do them. Okay. So right here is 1 over 1 is 1, right? Well, what's 2 over 2? That's 1. So I don't need that because it's the same as this one. When I keep going, what's 4 divided by 2? 3. Well, I have that up here. 3 divided by 1 is 3, so let's get rid of that double. Um, 6 divided by 2, or sorry, 4 divided by 2 is 2, so that's up here. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so I can get rid of that one. And 12 divided by 2 is 6, which is what this one is, so I can get rid of all those. So now I need to move on to 3. So now it's 3 over 1, 3 over 2, 3 over 5, 3 over 10. i got to do that. I'm sorry. God, I keep getting it backwards. Every single one of those, all right, over 5 now. Because we already did every single one over 1. Then we did every single one over 2. Now I do every single one of these over 5. So now it's 1 divided by 5, 2 divided by 5, 3 divided by 5, 4 divided by 5, 6 divided by 5, 12 divided by 5. And now I look for any doubles, and there aren't any. So the next one up is every single one of these divided by 10. So 1 divided by 10, 2 divided by 10, 3 divided by 10, 4 divided by 10, 6 divided by 10. And I look to see if there's any doubles. Well, 2 over 10 is the same as 1 fifth. 4 over 10 is the same as 2 fifths. 6 over 10 is the same as 3 fifths. 12 over 10 is the same as 6 over 5. So I cross out all the doubles because I don't need to go over them again. However, that still leaves me with 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32 different ones I have to look through to see if they work. So before I continue on with this problem, we'll continue on when I come back. But keep in mind, we have 32 different things we need to check to see if they are answers to this problem.